Selvey to be followed by Ben McPherson. Thank you very much, President Officer. President Officer, in preparing for this debate today, I found a brilliant article by Jamie Ross on the BBC about the history of the fight for a Scottish Parliament. And the article starts with a quote. We have a right, with all our separate national characteristics, to manage our own affairs in our own way. Jamie Ross also tells us in his article, this might sound like a line from a Yes Scotland's latest campaign leaflet, but it was actually said over a century ago. In 1913, William Cullen presented a successful Scottish Home Rule Bill to Westminster. But the outbreak of World War I prevented the creation of a strong Scottish Parliament, which could have completely changed Scotland's modern day history. And 105 years ago, we could have had that Home Rule, that near federalism, that most powerful of all devolved parliaments. And in his summing up of the Home Rule Bill, William Cowan said, and I quote, I should like, in conclusion, to say a few words and some of the details of the measure I am asking the House to read a second time. The Government of Scotland Bill is introduced on the footing that it represents a further instalment of the Government's policy of devolution. It would be easy to get evidence that this is the Government's policy. The Prime Minister has repeatedly said so, and other members of the Government have made similar statements. We are proposing this bill as a further instalment of that policy. The powers delegated to subordinate legislators under a federal system are those at which we must aim. Those powers must be similar, if not identical. Close quotes. So pedal forward 86 years later to 1999 when Donald Dewar proudly proclaimed in this place there shall be a Scottish Parliament. From that day on we have taken up our role and right to make some decisions for ourselves. Decisions that we have never wanted to give back, but decisions and powers we have wanted and successfully extended. Decisions that mean a Scottish resolution for Scottish issues and many which have seriously deviated from the path of our neighbours. We have had Kalman commissions and Smith commissions, all of which spoke to and in limited ways advanced the powers of this place. Presiding officer, I have seen no or very little expressions from people who want to end the powers of this parliament in Scotland. And as William Cowan commented in his summing up, he said the same. He also said in his summing up, and I quote again, you cannot nowadays take up a Scottish newspaper with very much chance of finding no reference to this burning question. I do not care who goes to Scotland today. If he speaks to anyone, he goes anywhere. If he consults the people, he will find that this is the most absorbing political topic in Scotland. Close quotes. True 105 years ago and still true today. The majority of the Scottish people prefer decisions about Scotland to be made in Scotland by their democratically elected Scottish Government, irrespective of what political colour that government may be. Yeah. Oliver Mundell. I thank you I, for giving way. Can the member explain then why she wants those powers to go back and be exercised in Brussels rather than here on behalf of the Scottish people? Christina McKelvey. It, could, I, could I actually refer the members to go and look at the functioning of the Treaty of the European Union? He will know that all 27 nations are independent nations and they have the choice to do whatever they like to do. They don't give sovereignty back to Brussels. At least, at least we have seen 105 years of stuttering progress. But what do we see now? We see 19 minutes, yes, just 19 minutes dedicated to Scotland. 1140 seconds, 1140 seconds to wipe away all of that progress. A debate of one, just one UK minister who has no understanding and very little interest in, in the powers of this place. That's why I welcome today's debate, presiding officer, without a motion or a question being asked, because sadly, any question now from this place will be wiped away by Tories in London demonstrating their deep and utter contempt for the Scottish people and her parliament. Presiding officer, we dedicated a whole afternoon to this debate compared to 1140 seconds. 1140 seconds of contempt from Westminster. Scotland, know your place, and the chuntering from the sidelines just proves my point. 
Presiding officer, Lord Steele of Eckwood, the former Holyrood presiding officer, has told his fellow lords that the UK government's flagship Brexit bill has dispensed with the power of the Scottish Parliament and cuts across the devolved settlement. I agree. And as parliamentarians, we have a duty to our constituents to ensure that we have not dispensed with our voices or our powers, because our voices will be heard in this place today and our voices shall ring out from this place today to that other place. Scotland will not be silenced. The last of the open